Hi, it's Congresswoman Jan Tchaikovsky, and I'm back with my plans and pans. Well, you may not be surprised, but the Republican Study Committee, which makes up more than 170 of the Republicans, has come out with another proposal that would diminish Social Security and Medicare. They're talking now about raising the age for eligibility for Social Security to 69. Now, I see that as taking money out of the pockets of people who have worked all their lives, put money into Social Security, waiting for a retirement that they can rely on, the Social Security money, and now they say that they're going to raise that age. I see that as theft of Social Security. And of course, Medicare has been such a lifesaver, and to do anything to diminish health care for older Americans, for people with disabilities, others who are eligible, is absolutely not feasible. And I want to tell you, there's a part of me that says, if they want to try and do that, make my day. Because this is a bipartisan, beloved program. Social Security, and the same is true for Medicare. This is not a partisan issue, and we're going to stop any effort. Efforts have gone on in the past. They have been defeated for good reason, and I can't believe that they're going to try it again. This, at the same time, and we'll talk more about that next week, they're talking about introducing legislation that would once again give tax breaks to the richest Americans at the cost of a trillion dollars or more to the budget. So these are bad decisions that are on the table right now. I also wanted to talk to you about that pressing issue of gas stoves. I went down to the floor of the House of Representatives and made it very clear, no one is coming after your gas stove. And I'm, a, I'm an owner of a, of a gas stove. This hullabaloo began when the Consumer Product Safety Commission, which is empowered with trying to do the science and warnings of hazardous products, have found that there may be some issues with gas stoves, that breathing in from the gas stoves could be harmful and also could affect our children and even in their development. Now, nothing has been confirmed. And as a person who likes to know the safety of products that I buy and don't you, and that's the job of the CPSC, I feel like research is a good thing to do. I want to know if there is a problem here or if there needs to be some corrections to a gas stove to make it safer. But no, Republicans called it the Gas Stove Freedom Act, you know, freedom for gas stoves, not necessarily for all people. But anyway, I spoke against the, the legislation and said, get your head out of the gas stove and look at the facts that we may be able to find. Now they say the Consumer Product Safety Commission may not issue any rules, can't even do the research, can't lay their finger on anything having to do with gas stoves. Makes no sense. And then there was a second bill, of course, not just one bill, another bill that said that the Department of Energy cannot issue any kind of guidance or make any rules to be sure that we set some standards on the efficiency of gas stoves. I, I, I don't understand if you would have heard the passion engaged in these issues and the hours that they took up on the floor of the house. It was quite amazing given all of the issues that are before us in the United States of America and around the world and for families everywhere. I guess the good news at the end of this story is that these bills are not gonna pass in the United States Senate. So actually all this time has been wasted in a discussion 
on gas stoves. In addition, the Republicans did pass two bills that would take power away from the Biden administration and turn it over to the Congress to make important decisions and that nothing could happen unless the members of the Congress would vote to approve decisions that usually belong to the executive branch, to the Biden administration. Those passed and are also among those bills that are not gonna become law. I had the opportunity to meet with a very important organization called Women's Health Access Matters. They focus exclusively on making sure that there is more research done on women's health, particularly issues like cancer and heart disease. And it's important to do that because did you know that for years, all of the clinical trials were done on men and all of the animals used in clinical trials were male animals. The reason that's important is that symptoms are often very different. Some years ago, Barbara Streisand came to the United States Congress to talk to a group of women, and it was about heart health. One of the very common symptoms for men is chest pain, but it's not necessarily the major symptom for women. And so she said, what you need to do is to go into the emergency room stand up and in your loudest voice say, I'm experiencing chest pains. And then they will take care of you as a woman and do the kind of investigation that, that you deserve. Well, that's not the way to go. We need to make sure that more women, that's what this group does, are involved in clinical trials. And that actually is really the law of the land, but it has not been fully implemented. The city of Chicago over the last several weeks and months has been welcoming immigrants to our city. Sent by Governor Greg Abbott from Texas, who just puts people in buses, often not giving them water or food, and sometimes not even telling them exactly where they're going. And even worse, we've heard of separation of families coming to the city of Chicago, and we are a welcoming city, but we're trying to do a couple of things, a number of colleagues of mine. What we are trying to do is to make sure that we get as many resources as we can from the federal government, as well as local and state, to be able to care properly for the immigrants that are coming. But the other thing is, we want to speed up work permits. You know, it's absolutely crazy. It can take years to get a work permit, even when you are deemed to be here legally. And yet at the same time, we are seeing from the business community that they need workers. Workers are needed right now. They are often just desperate to find people that can do these jobs and yet, they can't get a work permit easily. And so we're trying to speed up that process. If we could do that, we could help two problems, the shortage of workers and making sure that these immigrants have the money that they want to work hard and take care of themselves and their families. I was invited to speak at the Baha'i House of Worship. I think all of us know in Wilmette this incredibly beautiful house of, of worship, an architectural wonder. It's absolutely fabulous. I introduced a resolution condemning the nation of Iran that has targeted, discriminated, and murdered members of the Baha'i faith. The meeting was also to commemorate the anniversary of the murder of 10 young Iranian women who refused to denounce their religion. That was their crime. That was their crime. They were shot to death, one at a time, after having spent months, months of torture in a prison. They watched each other get shot, and each was offered the opportunity to take another path. 
to, to choose life, but to denounce their religion. They were mostly young women in their 20s, and the youngest, who was last to be shot, was 17 years old. This kind of discrimination continues in Iran. I was there to support the Baha'i people, many of whom also live in my district and enjoy so much the beautiful, beautiful building that is theirs, but also just to stand up against this kind of targeting of people for whatever reason, their, their religion, their color, their gender identity. And that is also something that the Baha'i religion embraces as well. So I was really happy to go there. The temple is in my district and they are a wonderful group of people. So that's it for me this week. I will keep you posted. I will see you next week and happy Juneteenth. Thank you for watching my video. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, where my handle is at Jan Schakowsky.